Welcome to the Chosen Devotional Season Number 1, Day 31, Power. Power. Let's look at Ephesians 1 verse 21. Ephesians 1 21 says, Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Power. Nicodemus and his Sanhedrin colleagues were the political and religious rule makers and enforcers of their day. They doled out a dizzying mess of statutes down to the most impossible to follow, legalistic minutiae. They were especially fond of legislating Sabbath observances, purity, and tithing laws. Of course, the Pharisees created all kinds of loopholes for themselves. They deemed the mutual oral law to be equally as binding as the written one. In other words, they could change or follow a law however and whenever they saw fit. That is crazy. Consequently, this group of rule maker breakers was thought by the people to be high handed, hypocritical zealots. Their shameless arrogance provoked resentment and fear based obedience. They were essentially fancy bullies. As far as he was concerned, Nicodemus deserved the glory he got. After all, his command of scripture, religious training, prominence in the community, and the power to throw folks in jail for, say, fishing on Sabbath, mandated it. And who would dare question him? What common man was more powerful than he? Nicodemus discovered the answers when he met Jesus. Jesus didn't look very important. He didn't adorn himself with elaborate garments, phylacteries, and long tassels the way the Pharisees did, nor did he brandish a list of credentials and demand deference. Yet, his power defied and preempted all systems of institutional hierarchy. His otherworldly authority was dispensed with compassion and grace. It was undeniable. Jesus cast out demons and did miracles, And Nicodemus was among the few men of power who knew what that meant. Jesus was sent by God. And although his presence threatened Nicodemus' position, power, and livelihood, it beckoned his heart and compelled him to risk all that he'd built. In Jesus, he found real truth and power, not the religious invitation he was part of. He found the Word. It had been made flesh and was dwelling among them. John 1.14 The body of scripture Nicodemus had dedicated his entire life to knowing knew him by name. He found the hope to which he'd been called, and it was beyond powerful. That was really exciting. All these things Nicodemus is learning. Poor guy. But we're going to get to some good stuff. But first, let's do the prayer focus. God, help us repent of the times that we have valued status over humility. And God, we just ask you to bring us to our knees in gratitude and in awe of the fact that you want to have a relationship with us. God, it is so awesome that you have come down here in the flesh. You stepped into our world to save us and to have a relationship with us. So I hope today, Lord, that we can just put our sins before you, confess them, and then just open our hearts, Lord, to have a great relationship with you. Be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll read the moving forward. Number one, write down a time when you felt better than someone else because of your religious status or choices or their lack thereof. I remember a lot of times when I was a younger child because I was blessed to be able to go to church, but then that kind of made me feel like I was better than other kids at school who didn't have that chance yet to go. And other kids would do things or say things. I remember thinking, well, I'm better than that. I'm not saying that or cussing that or I'm not going and doing these things. But that's not really what God wants. It's good that I wasn't doing those bad things, but he wants us to be able to tell other people about him so they can stop doing those bad things, right? Not that I should feel better than that. So there's kind of a difference with that. Number two, what's a rule or lifestyle choice you've stressed as important, perhaps at the expense of a more direct and pure connection with Jesus? I think sometimes when we just think being good is better than having a relationship. And there's a great saying that it's not about religion. Jesus is a relationship and that's what he wants with us. And to be able to come to him through his word and just to grow closer to him. And as we do those things, then that will keep us from doing a lot of the things that break God's heart. But I think it's important not to focus on the rules, but to focus on that relationship. And number three. We rarely have to risk a lot to follow Jesus, but what are some things you've had a hard time risking to follow Jesus? 
I think the main thing always is risking my reputation. I want people to like me, right? You know, people at work or people wherever we're at. And sometimes when you follow Jesus, then you have to do things that other people may make fun of. Or if you try to share their, you know, share faith with them a little bit, they might make fun of you. So I think for me, the, you know, reputation, but the thing is the older I get, I don't care about my reputation. I really don't. It doesn't matter now what people think because I so want people to know about Jesus. So I'm willing to go and talk to anybody about Jesus now. So that's kind of the cool thing. The stronger you get in your faith, the less you worry about risking anything because it's just all for God's glory. And just think, if if somebody makes fun of me, but then that person ends up going to heaven, that makes it all worth it. So I'm willing to risk anything these days. I hope you are too. I hope today you got a lot out of this devotion. The main thing that I have learned is that I don't want to be like all those Pharisees, just following all the letters of the law. I want to be able to love God with my whole heart and be going out and sharing him with other people. So I hope you too just think that it's more of a relationship with Jesus as what's important and that you're going to go out there and share that love with other people. Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. You can get your own chosen devotional mailed right to your house, season one or season two. They also have great Bible studies from season one and season two. Simply go to thechosengifts.com to find all kinds of great chosen merchandise.